Ratings are one on Kevin, and today I'm going to predict the star ratings for all of my unread books. So I got this idea when I did my little March reading stats, you can see it up there, and I kind of like felt like, okay, I'm talking about this month as if it's in the future, as if I'm predicting what's going to happen. And so because of that, I got this idea that, hey, why don't I try and do that kind of thing? So I'm going to go through every single book on these three shelves. You can't see the books that are here. And I'm going to tell you how many stars I think I'm going to give each and every single one of these books. And I'm going to give you three reasons why I think I will give it the rating that I am going to predict. So without further ado, let's do some predicting. So I'm going to start with the top shelf and work my way to the bottom. So as you can see, the top shelf is completely empty now, but before I do the predicting, I just wanted to let you know that I am not going to go through certain books. So on this shelf, we have Dokepi, um, Vicious Spirits, Fire Blood, and Gemina, which is the second book in the Illumina series, and all three of these are sequels. This is technically not a sequel, it is a companion to Gumi Wicked Fox, but because, as I said, it's a companion, I count it as the next in a series. Fireblood is the second book in the Frostblood series, so I'm not predicting this one as well. And Gemina is the second, yeah, it's the second book in the Illuminate Files series. So because all three of these are part of a series and I've only read the first book, I don't want to predict the second book in a series because I feel like that is biased because I've already read the first book. So because of that, I don't want to predict sequels or a book that is part of a series, either that I have not read or that I have read. So books that are part of series, I am not going to predict unless it's the first book in the series that I have not read. The first book is The Fifth Gender by G.L. Carriger. I think I'm going to give this book four stars because science fiction, murder mystery, and an alien race with five genders. I think that sounds very intriguing, very interested to read this, so I think it will get four stars. The second book is Adnan by Linnea Axelsson. I think I will give this book five stars because it is Sami, a novel in verse and historical. So it is set in the 1900s with Swedish colonialism politics, it says, because Sweden took over Sathmi and did not treat our indigenous peoples, in this case the Sami, very well. So I'm excited to read this too. The third book is All You Can Ever Know by Nicole Chung. I think I will give this book four stars because this is a memoir about adoption because Nicole Chung is an adoptee from Korea to the US. And the third and last reason is identity. So like the exploration of cultural identity, national identity, racial identity, national identity, and all of those things that happens when you are an adoptee from, in this case, Korea to the US. Then we have In the Mountains Echoed by Khaled Husseini. And I think I'm going to give this book five stars for multiple reasons. The first reason is that it's featuring sibling love, it has a journey in it, and it's written by Khaled Husseini. I mean, The Kite Runner is one of my absolute favorite books of all time, so this is definitely a five-star prediction. Then we have Some of the Water by Bethany C. Morrow. I think I will give this book five stars. It features black sirens, first of all. It is a modern fantasy, so it's a fantasy set in our world. And last but not least, it features self-discovery. So our main character, a black siren, which I love, has to like discover herself because she faces a lot of difficulties. So this is five stars, I think. The next one is Beach Read by Emily Henry. I think I will give this book five stars because it is a summer romance between polar opposites who are offers. I don't need to say more. Next is Below by Alexander Warwick. I think I will give this book four stars because it is a polar fantasy based off of Inuit mythology and culture and also has a face-stealing demon. Next is Bonds of Brass by Emily Skrutsky. I think I will give this book five stars because it is a space opera featuring a galactic empire and an assassination attempt. I think that sounds intriguing. <laughs> Cinderella is Dead by Callan Byron. I think I will give this book four stars 
because it has Cinderella mythology, it's sapphic, and it has to do with breaking free from societal norms and expectations. Circle of Shadows by Evelyn Skye. I think I will give this book five stars because a society of assassins, an empire of magic, and a world of secrets. Yes, please. Then we have The City We Became by N.K. Jemisin. I think I'm going to give this five stars because I've only heard good reviews and heard that it's gotten very like high ratings from a lot of people. Second, because it is a sci-fi. Third, it has to do with like magic and myths of contemporary New York City, which I also love that. And I'm intrigued to find out what, what is meant by the city we became. Like, um, can I become a city? How does that work? I'm, I'm intrigued to find out. Then we have Confessions of a Mask by Yukio Mishima. I think I'm going to give this five stars because it's a queer coming of age novel set in imperial wartime Japan. I have said it and I will continue to say it for as long as this channel is live. I love reading books set from around the world, from all kinds of time periods, following all kinds of people. So this is something I am very excited about and it's something that I absolutely love reading about. So I definitely think this is a five star prediction. Then we're on to the first graphic novel on this list and it is Cosmo Knights by Hannah Templer. I think this is going to get five stars from me and I only have one reason for this and it is for this ragtag band of space gays, liberation means beating the patriarchy at its own game. I love that. Then we have Daughters of Narai by Reni K. Amayo. I think I'm going to give this book five stars. The world is kind of like a reimagining of what if Nigeria was never colonized. Like this is an imagining of what Nigeria would look like. It's about twins who are goddesses who grew up as human and they were separated at birth to kind of ensure that they weren't found by Uzi, who was the man who brought the gods to their knees. And the third reason is what WCAN kind of gave a blurb and it says, this book is a love letter to black women. It is beautifully written and its message is so powerful and incredibly important. Every black woman needs to read this, we deserve the story. So that is the third reason I think that sounds very like important and I think it's definitely the kind of book that I will enjoy. I'm not a black woman, that's not what I'm saying. I'm just saying that that, that is high praise for a book about black teenagers who are goddesses, which is super cool. To be honest. Next we have Den Bedundelige Kärlekens Historia by Carl Johan Wallgren. I think I'm going to give this book three stars. It is kind of like a Beauty and Beast retelling slash reimagining. It is also kind of like The Hunchback of Notre Dame retelling slash reimagining. And it has an unconditional love at its core. Then we have En Man som heter Ove by Fredrik Backman. I think I will give this book four stars because it has gotten a lot of like international praise. Like people from around the world are praising this book, which I think is really cool. It is about Ove, who is a stereotypical middle-aged Swedish man. And it's about unexpected friendships. Then we have Into Smatsisura by Sebastian Hafner, and this is a memoir. And it follows kind of like a, the German history of Hafner's contemporary, like where he grew up. And it is set from the 1940s to well into like mid 1900s and follows kind of what happens in Germany with everything, the inflation, the rise of the Nazis, how everything fell apart and all kinds of that. And, and because part of my family lived in Germany during this time, it's going to be very interesting to read this knowing that my family members lived through this as well, that this is the Germany that they grew up in. Then we have Everything Belongs to Us by Eugene Gray's words. I think I'm going to give this book five stars because it is a little bit about social commentary in South Korea. It's set in year 1978 in the most prestigious university in all of South Korea, which is in the capital Seoul. It follows multiple characters that come from very different backgrounds who are trying to succeed in this society that kind of does everything to build itself up. I've said this before in this video, I love books from countries and cultures different from my own from any time 
any place, you know, so I think this, I think I will really enjoy this book. Then we have The Girl in Red by Christina Henry. I think I'm going to give this book four stars because it is a post-apocalyptic retelling of Little Red Riding Hood, where Red is a badass and not as defenseless as she is in the original tales. I am always going to be here for feminist retellings, feminist and queer retellings. This is not a queer retelling, but it is a feminist retelling. Then we have Girls Save the World in this one by Ash Parsons. I think I'm going to give this book five stars because it has female friendships at its core, a zombie con turns into a zombie apocalypse, and Girls Save the World in this one. The next is The Girl with Seven Names by Yun So Lee. I think I'm going to give this book five stars because it is a memoir about escaping North Korea. And it's also about figuring out who you are while on the run, when you have no identity, you're completely alone in trying to figure out what you're going to do now, now that you've escaped. So I think this is going to be a difficult but very important read and definitely a five-star prediction. The next is The Gravity of Us by Phil Stamper. I think I'm going to give this book five stars. It's about two boys who are both sons of astronauts who are sent on a space mission. It is also queer and it also involves this conspiracy about the mission that each has a parent who is an astronaut on. I think that sounds interesting and I love space and I love queer, so yeah. The next is The House in the Cerulean Sea by TJ Klune. I think I'm going to give this five stars. I've only heard great praise about this, I've only heard a lot of good things about this book, and it also involves magical children, it's queer, but it also has this kind of found family in it too. So I think this will be a very like cozy, beautiful read. Then we have The Husband's Secret by Lyan Moriarty. I think I'm going to give this book four stars. I don't really have three reasons for this, but I have one. Because this book is about a letter. So the husband wrote a letter to be opened after he dies. And this letter contains his secret, the most deep, dark secret that he has, but the wife stumbles upon this letter while he is alive and opens it. I am very, very intrigued by that. Then we're moving on to the second shelf and as you can see it is completely emptied. The first book is In Order to Live by Yeonmi Park and this is just like The Girl with Seven Names. This is a story about escaping North Korea. I think I'm going to give this book five stars because partly because it's a memoir and it has to do with leaving North Korea and that it's a very difficult journey that she goes on. But also I've listened to her TED talk and I follow her channel on YouTube and things like that. And I really, she is such a good speaker in a lot of ways. She has such a strong voice is what I want to say. And listening to her talk about her journey and what it's like to be North Korean and things like that is extremely interesting to me. So that is the third reason why I think I'm going to give this book five stars. The next one is Late to the Party by Kelly Quinlan. I think I'm going to give this book five stars because it has to do with queer friendships. Our main character is lesbian and she quickly becomes friends with this gay guy. And it also has to do with being misfits in high school and it's a coming of age story. And I think it's always interesting or very important to read books about these kinds of characters. Then we have The Last Human by Lee Bacon and I think I'm going to give this book five stars. Is there a single science fiction book that I have gone through that I have not rated? that I have not predicted will get a four or five star? I don't think so. But this one, I think it's going to get five stars because partly it's set in kind of like a dystopian future because the robots took over. I don't need more reasons, I feel like. <laughs> I just saw this and I was like, oh my God, I need to read this. And I'm just going to read like the bold print. It says a robot who has never questioned the rules, a human who shouldn't exist, and a journey that will change everything. So I'm really intrigued by this. Then we have The Library of the Unwritten by A.J. Hackwit. 
I think that's how you pronounce the name. I think I'm going to give this book four stars because the library written is this library in hell with every single story an author did not finish. Therefore the unwritten, but more so because it's unfinished. So every single story an author has not finished is in this library in hell. And we follow this librarian who has to make sure that each of these stories do not have a character that will materialize and, you know, end up in hell or make their way to heaven or even to earth. Like that idea is so like, I'm so intrigued by that. And also I'm doing this a lot. I know I'm going to read the little thing at the top on the back. It says, it's like the good place meets law and order. Bibliophile crime unit. This book is so much fun. That was a blurb by Shauna McGuire. I've never read a book of his, but yeah, I predict four stars for this one. Then we have The Meet Cute Club by Jack Harbin. I think I'm going to give this book five stars. It is a queer romance and our main character, Jordan, he has this little romance book club called Meet Cute Club. So book club is the second reason, of course. And the third is that they're not really like the two, the two guys, um, Jordan and his love interest, they're not really starting off on the right foot. The love interest is an employee at the local bookstore. I love that too. So this is definitely a five star prediction. The next one is 1001 Nights by Hanan al Shaykh. And I think I'm going to give this book five stars. It has mythology from the Middle East as well as India. It has to do a lot with a lot of kind of like myths. It is a collection of stories gathered from India, Persia, and across the Great Arab Empire, retold by Hanan al Shaykh. So I am really excited about this. I love reading stories from all over the world. So I'm really excited to read this. Then we have Pachinko by Min Jin Lee. I think this book will get four stars. The reason I'm not seeing five stars is because it's always more difficult to, for me to really enjoy a book when it's this long, which is, has absolutely nothing to do with the book itself. It's just that my enjoyment of a story usually dwindles a little bit if a story is a lot longer. So that's why I'm saying four stars, even though I think I'm really going to enjoy this book. I don't want to say five stars because knowing myself, it's more difficult for me to, um, to enjoy a book that is thicker because I always rate depending on my enjoyment. But so going into the reasons why I think I'm going to give this book four stars. This book is generational. It's, it starts off early 1900s and it's about the South Korean family. And because some things happen, they can move to Japan. And that's where the generational aspect comes in that it's this Korean family going to Japan and then living in Japan and what it's like to be Korean living in Japan. I, I just think it's going to be very fun and very like, I've only heard great things about this book. And also the cover is absolutely gorgeous. But I've, as I said, I've only heard great things about this and I've never read a story about that setting, like the early 1900s in South Korea, what it's like to be Korean and move to Japan and what it's like to be Korean in Japan and things like that. I'm really interested to find out what I will learn about this and what it's like to live in that place and what the characters go through. The next one is The Power by Naomi Alderman. I think I'm going to give this book four stars. The reasons why I think I'm really going to enjoy this book is first of all, it won Women's Prize for Fiction in 2017. And it says on the back, all over the world, women are discovering they have the power. With a flick of the fingers, they can inflict terrible pain, even death. Suddenly every man on the planet finds they've lost control. So it's crush the patriarchy, which I think this is going to be a very like feminist read. 
I am a little bit worried about the whole thing that suddenly women can inflict terrible pain, even death, because I'm a little bit worried that, I don't know, it will justify the people who are anti-feminism that, oh, women are power hungry and can inflict death. I feel like it, I, I don't know, that's just a thing that I'm a little bit worried about, but I still think it's going to be a very feminist read and I am intrigued by it and I am excited to read it. I'm just a little bit worried about that part of it. So if you've read this book, please let me know if I should or should not be as worried as I am. I don't know if that makes sense, but if it does, please let me know down below if that's an issue for you or if you think like, no, it's done a lot better in the book that you shouldn't worry about that. It's great and things like that. Just please let me know. Then we have Princess Princess Ever After by Katie O'Neill. I think I'm really going to enjoy this. I think I'm going to give this book five stars. It is queer in every sense of the world, in every sense of the world, in every sense of the word. This book follows two girls, one of which has grown up being told that she's a prince and she's like, I am no prince. Yeah, and it's these two girls, I think both are princesses. Yeah, both are princesses and they find a happily ever after with them, with each other, which I think is really cute. It's the kind of story that we need and it's also a graphic novel. I don't think I said that. I think it also is going to be very like heartwarming in a lot of ways. I can honestly say that the only reason I haven't read this book yet, even though it's super short, is because the spine, I don't know how well you can see it, it's brown. And because I organize my red shelf according to color, I, I don't really know where I can fit in brown. That's, I know that's kind of like petty, but that is the only reason I haven't picked this up yet. I have felt like, oh, I can read this, and I'm like, oh no, it, the spine is brown. I don't know where I can put it, so. Yeah, that's, but I think I'm going to give this five stars. I think I'm going to really, really enjoy it. Then we're moving on to Perfectly Preventable Deaths by Deirdre Sullivan. I think I'm going to give this book four stars. It has to do with witches, which like I grew up with the, the OG Sabrina teenage witch. Why did Netflix have to do like in adaptations so edgy? Like, I just wanted that kind of, you know, cozy teenage witch with a talking cat. Like, I wanted exactly that feeling of that show from, I don't know, 80s, 90s. I wanted exactly that. Why did I have to make it dark and mysterious and edgy? Why? I don't understand. I would have loved that. But anyways, this has to do with, like, teenage witches' powers in this very mysterious town where teenagers or teenage girls, yeah, teenage girls go missing for generations. Very intriguing. I feel like there is going to be a little bit of a mystery element to this book, which I'm also very excited about. And like, look at the cover. It's gorgeous. I think I'm saving this for October, you know, the witchy season. Then we're on to the most intimidating book on all of my shelves, and it is The Priory of the Orange Tree, or should I call it The Brick? It's like over 700 pages long, but it's gorgeous. It's gorgeous. I forgot to say the author is Samantha Shannon, which it always also says right there. So this book I've heard a lot of mixed things about. It has kind of like a matriarchy which I know Olivia from Olivia's Catastrophe, I will link her video up there. She discusses the matriarchy in this book and in another book. I completely recommend checking that out. It was a very interesting. She always has such insightful and interesting things to bring up. I, she always has great discussions in my opinion. So check that out, it's up there. But so this has a matriarchy and I also know that it has sapphic elements to it. I don't know if the character is sapphic or if being sapphic is kind of like the norm in this matriarchy. I don't know. I also know that there's a dragon in it. Like, to be honest, when I got this book, it was a five-star prediction, but today, predicting this book, I'm going to say three stars because, as I said, the whole thing with the matriarchy, 
something that is going for it is the fact that it has the sapphic element but something that is really pulling it down is that i've heard that this is very much based on asian mythology and is kind of cultural appropriation which i am not here for i haven't heard anything specifically about that mythology part if it was done respectfully or not or like i don't even know how much of this is inspired by asian mythology or asia a geographical place i don't know but for now, I'm going to say three stars. The next one is Raven och Tomten by Astrid Lindgren and Eva Eriksson. I think Eva Eriksson is the artist. Yeah, so it says that the text is Astrid Lindgren's. So Astrid Lindgren, you may know from the Pippi Longstocking stories. I think that's the English name for her. But it's Astrid Lindgren and... Tomten is a mythological, or I shouldn't say Tomten, the Tomte is a mythological being that is very centered, like like you can you see him everywhere in Sweden. He is a very like Sweden-based Nordic folklore creature. I don't know, I haven't seen anything about the Tomte in either like in neither Denmark or Norway, I haven't. We have these, you know, songs that you sing. I don't know how to explain it, but we have like several, Hey Tomte Gubbar is the one that my family sang the most. And even though the Tomte is the same word, like this being here is the Tomte, the mythological folklore creature is this, but we call him the Tomte and Santa Claus is also the Tomte. So Tomten is both this creature and also Santa Claus. We refer to Santa Claus as the Tomte because of this being. There is a whole thing about that. Like I could do a two hour video just explaining the mythology behind the Tomte and Santa Claus. I, I don't have time to, to do that right now, but I think I'm going to give this book five stars. This book is also very interesting because it is pop-up, pop-up. I love that. But I am saving this book for Christmas, which you might see from that little excerpt with a Christmas tree. But I am saving this book for Christmas. The next one is Satellite by Nick Lake. I think I'm going to give this book five stars because it's a science fiction. The main characters were born in space and now they're going to the only place they've never been before, home. I'm really intrigued by that, like going to Earth from that perspective. I'm very intrigued by that. And it's a science fiction. I love science fiction, which obviously you know. The next one is The Serpent's Secret by Sayantani Dasgupta. And this is the first book in the Kiran Mala and the Kingdom Beyond series. It's a middle grade and and I think I'm going to give this book five stars, honestly. It has to do with South Asian mythology, which I think is extremely, like, I'm very excited about that. I love, as you know, like, I'm a broken record right now. Like, I love reading books, especially mythology from around the world about people who have experiences that differ from mine. I'm very excited that Karen Mala, she grew up hearing these stories and then suddenly, oh my God, these things exist like these people exist like from the stories you grew up hearing like oh my god they exist like i'm very intrigued about that and also the whole thing that it's south asian inspired and it's set in new jersey so i guess it's set in the us i don't know if new jersey exists somewhere else too and her parents vanish and she has to find them and she has to save them and that's how she kind of gets rolled into the whole mythological world. I'm excited for this, five stars. Then we're moving on to The Seven Devils by Elizabeth May and Laura Lamb. And I think I'm going to give this book five stars. It is about like a ruthless empire. We're following this princess who faked her own death to get rid of the whole thing about being the heir to a ruthless empire and also has to do with being like 
rebelling against this empire and you know kind of breaking free from that like if you want to resist you have to rebel i love that idea and i love space things science fiction and i get kind of like a little bit of like star wars vibes which i'm digging so yes i think this is going to get five stars the next one is the book that I think so far is going to be the most difficult book to read. And it is The Ship We Built by Lexi Bean. The reason I think this is going to be extremely difficult to read is because the main character in this book comes from a toxic family, does not have a good relationship with their parents. And that's essentially what this is about, kind of finding yourself, loving yourself, and coming to terms with what happened to you and the fact that you do not have to forgive it in order to move on. And I think this is going to be extremely difficult for me because of that. But I think I'm going to give this book four stars. I know it's going to be difficult to read, but I think it's going to be worth it. The next one is She Drives Me Crazy by Kelly Quindlin. I think I'm going to give this book five stars. It is sapphic and it is a romance between a basketball player and the head cheerleader, and they do not like each other. Yes, five stars, definitely five stars. And we're moving on to SMS Transupiero by Angelian Laestadius. I think I'm going to give this book four stars. It is about this Sami girl who grew up in Stockholm, I think. She wants to kind of get in touch to her Sami heritage and what it's like to be Sami, but her family don't really speak Sami anymore and she doesn't have any connections to that part of her cultural heritage. And then suddenly someone texts her in Sami and she like it opens up her world to that like cultural heritage of what it is like to be Sami in Sweden and figuring out who you are and your cultural identity and everything that goes with it. So I definitely think I'm going to give this book four stars. It is very short and it is in Swedish. It is a young adult novel. But yeah, I think I'm going to give this book four stars. Moving on to Sorcerer Forms by Margaret Rogerson. I think I'm going to give this book four stars. I have heard mixed reviews about this. But the reason I think I'm going to give this book four stars is because it has to do with like sorcery. And this main character who figures out that, oh, I can do magic. Like, I love that idea. And the third reason is the fact that it is queer. The girl that I mentioned who suddenly realizes she can do magic, her love interest is bisexual. From what I understand, it's a bisexual guy, which I, I don't think we see enough of bisexual guys, especially not in YA or adult, really. But like, bisexual guys in relationships to girls, I think, I think that's important because, you know, bisexuals aren't only in relationships with people the same sex as them, you know what I mean? But I feel like most bisexual characters today are in same-sex relationship stories. So I just, I think it's really cool to read. I haven't read this yet, but I'm excited to read this book. And knowing that the love interest is a bisexual guy who is having a romance with a girl. Like, I think that's, I'm excited about that. Because representation matters. But yeah, I think I'm going to give this book four stars. Next we have Stand Up Yumi Chung by Jessica Kim. I think I'm going to give this book five stars. It has to do with this shy girl who is very awkward or who people see her as very awkward and she's bullied in some capacity. And she loves comedy. She watches comedy on Netflix. And she is working these awkward memories into comedy gold. I'm excited about that. I'm very excited to see kind of what comedy she comes up with, but I'm really excited to see how many times I'm going to laugh with this book. Moving on to These Witches Won't Burn by Isabel Sterling. I think I'm going to give this book five stars. It is, it has witches, it has queer witches, and it has like strong female characters. They're all teenagers. And this also, like I said, with Perfectly Preventable Deaths, just gives to me a little bit like Sabrina the Teenage Witch vibes. And as I said, that was my childhood or part of my childhood. So... I'm really excited about that reading this book too. 
Then we have This Time Will Be Different by Misa Sugiura. And I am very like interested to read this as well. I think I'm going to give this five stars. The main character and her family are Japanese Americans. It's also sapphic, which I love. And our main character, Hannah, she kind of, she doesn't really fit the, the standard that her Japanese mother sets for her. And she's making it her mission to save her family's shop from going under. So I think this will have a lot to do with like coming of age, you know, self-exploration in family and what it means to be a teenager going through all of that, I guess, too. I don't know how big the sapphic part is, but I'm excited to find out. And the last book on the second row is Tink the at Flee by Pim van Hest and Aaron Dijkstra. This is a book that I think I'm going to give five stars. The only reason I have not read it, even though it's really short, is because it says imagine running. And it is in the sense that imagine fleeing, I guess. And I know that the English title that the authors themselves use on Twitter and social media is on the run. This is a book that was originally in Dutch. The authors are Dutch. This is a translated work into Swedish and it is about this girl being in a country that is torn by war or rather ruined by war. And it is about kind of like a mind game, you can say, like imagine if this happened to you. Imagine everything that you know is lost and a lot of things like that. And the reason it's difficult for me to read this is because knowing that someone in my family went through this down to the point almost is something that really makes it difficult for me to read stories like this just knowing that someone that I know someone in my family went through this makes it a lot harder for me to kind of wrap my head around it you can say but that is the only reason I haven't read this but it is a short book and has like these beautiful illustrations I'm very intrigued by this I am waiting to be in a good mind space to read this book. It is also very huge. I had to reorganize shelves to make this fit. As you can see, it almost doesn't fit. So that's, I, I had to work real hard to make sure that this fit the shelves. Then we're on to the third shelf. I know it looks like I haven't removed anything because it just covered like this much. The first book on the third shelf is The Unbroken by C.L. Clark. I think I'm going to give this book five stars. It has assassins, spies, and a revolution at its core. And I think also it is queer, which I'm very excited about. All of that. Moving on to An Underground Life by God Beck. This is a, as it says, a memoir of a gay Jew in Nazi Germany. I think I'm going to give this book five stars. The first reason is because it is set in Nazi Germany where my grandpa grew up. And it's also a memoir and it's about this gay Jewish man who grew up at this time when it was not good to either be homosexual or Jewish. And I know that this is going to be very difficult. And I also feel like as someone who is queer. This kind of gives me a little bit of insight to what my grandpa grew up hearing about people like me, which I expect not to be very good, which is also why I have not read this book yet. The next book is the most intimidating book on all of my shelves, and it is Welcome to Utopia by Alan M. Atkinson. The reason why this is so intimidating, you ask? It's this thick, but oh no, it doesn't look that thick. I know, look at the tiny text. I mean, like it's already well over 400 pages, but the, but the text is like this tiny. But I am excited about this and has to do like with this world that is supposedly a utopia in like the future, but it's not really a utopia, you know what I mean? Of course, I'm going to give a science fiction book a high rating. I am not going to predict a five star. I'm going to predict a four star for this book because it is a long book with tiny text. But I am, I do think I'm really going to enjoy this because it really sounds like the kind of book that I will enjoy. Like it's set in this world 
that is, as I said, a utopia, technological advancement. There are there are floaters in the sky, you know, kinds of like flying vehicles and stuff like that. I think this is going to be a very fun read. I just think it's going to take me a long time to get through it. Moving on to The Winter's Orbit by Everina Maxwell, we have another science fiction. I think I'm going to give this book five stars. It is queer. It has this kind of like murder mystery thing because the prince of the empire, is he, he dies and his widower has to look for a replacement prince and things like that and like, whoa, maybe his death wasn't an accident, you know? So it has that mis mystery thing going for it as well. And it's galaxy. Like this is the other side of science fiction that I absolutely love. And I will 100% pick, always pick this kind of science fiction over, for example, Utopia. Welcome to Utopia that is set in a specific place, but it is set in the future. So it's science fiction. But I love this kind of science fiction because it's in space. I love space. I love reading about space. I love reading about space travels, space adventure and things like that. So I definitely think I'm going to give this book five stars. Moving on to Would Like to Meet by Rachel Winters. I think I'm going to give this book five stars. It is also the last romance novel on all of my to be read shelves. The first reason is that it has this girl who is just doing her summer job and the guy who's a screenwriter, this guy, he doesn't really do romance. And so in order for him to write better romance for like this, the, for the screenplays, they fake date so that he like goes to dates and gets that kind of experience. I love this. And I should also mention the fact that if she does not, if he doesn't succeed in writing this screenplay, the girl will lose her summer job. And she needs that summer job. So she is fake dating him and you know, sparks fly, it's a romance novel. I am here for it. We're moving from the last romance on the shelves to the last mythology book kind of thing. And we have Who Let the Gods Out by Maz Evans. I kind of want to do like, who let the gods out, who, 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 like, you know, that will always be from rag, ragtags, you know, like the, the small babies crawling around having like mischief going on and stuff. That is another thing that I grew up watching and that had that thing like, who let the dogs out, who, 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 they, it, it, it had that song in it and I will forever associate that song with that specific movie, but this is Who Let the Gods Out. I think I'm going to give this book four stars. And other than the whole like obvious mythology thing, it is Greek mythology to be specific. The kids in this book accidentally release Fanatas. That is not a good thing. Fanatas is like a very bad guy. A very bad guy, you look, look it up. But they release Fanatas and they have to kind of, oh, we, we have to save the world and we need the other gods to do it. And as the three reasons, I'm going to read the three words that are attached at the back of this book. So it just says, this book in three words, hilarious, heartfelt and adventure. And I love that. All those three words speak to me. So yes, I definitely think I'm going to give this book a high rating. The absolute last book I'm going to talk about because it is the absolute last book on my unread shelves. It is When My Name Was Kyoko by Linda Sue Park. And I think I'm going to give this book five stars. This book is about a girl who is Korean and she grows up in Japan and everyone tells her like, your name is Kyoko but her name is not Kyoko. And it says on the back, when her name was Kyoko, Japanese soldiers ordered people around telling them what they could do or say, even what sort of flowers they could grow. When her name was Kyoko, World War II came to Korea and her friends and relatives had to work and fight for Japan. When her name was Kyoko, she never forgot her name was actually Kim Sun Hee. And no matter what she was called, she was Korean not Japanese. I think this is going to be very like impactful, but I definitely think this book is going to get five stars for me. 
So that was it for my predictions. I hope you enjoyed. Please leave a like if you do. What do you think about my predictions? Do you agree? Are there any books of these that you've read and you rated similarly? Or do you completely disagree with my reasons behind my predictions? Please let me know. And until next time, good reading. Bye.